Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you so much for being here today. We're talking about getting dirty. And I am again going to start out by going back to an email from Dr. Will Falconer, but we've got more than that in today's episode because dirt is so important. And oh my goodness, like we, (laughs) I never thought much about how important it is to get dirty until I started living with a germaphobe. I have to be honest, when I I met my husband, I didn't realize, and it got really bad within probably two to three years um, after we were together, after we got together, it was starting to get bad. He, (laughs) he was, and he's still, let me tell you, he still washes his hands a lot, but he has gotten a lot better because I am not. I'm not an easy person for a a germaphobe to live with. (laughs) Let me tell you, like, I'm not dirty by any means, but I understand the importance of dirt and getting dirty and not using, you know, not bleaching everything and not using hand sanitizer. And like, there is a certain amount of germs that we need to be exposing ourselves to, to stay healthy. So just kind of naturally over the course of the years, um, I have slowly presented him with reasoning and rationale for needing germs in our lives and not being dirty. Like, you know, I'm not, if you're watching the video, you can see I'm not a dirty person, but I appreciate that I need to get out in the dirt and I need, I need to have, I need to take in nature to be healthy and not try to rid myself and my life of and my home of germs, right? Certainly there are germs we don't want around like salmonella. So we do clean our kitchen well, but I'm not using harsh chemicals. I use all natural cleaners and I, uh, there's just something to be said about nature and living in nature. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that after I read you this email from Dr. Will Falconer or part of this email from Dr. Will Falconer. It says free immune boost from nature An astute internet researcher and vital animal alpha member brought a hugely interesting and good news article to my attention. A daycare in Finland put turf in their play areas, replacing the common tile gravel and concrete areas. The children were allowed to play among dwarf heather and blueberry and care for crops in planter boxes. In other words, they got to get dirty. In a very short time, the results were in. These youngsters showed more diverse microbiomes, both on their skin and in their guts, stronger immunity, less chance of immune mediated diseases like allergies or autoimmune disease. Uh, That's incredible, right? (laughs) Like all good researchers, these are soft peddling their results as their sample size was small, 75 kids aged three to five. So far they are calling it a correlation and not claiming causation. Still, it is so encouraging. Says the chief of this research, here's a quote, It would be best if children could play in puddles and everyone could dig organic soil, encourages environmental ecologist Aki Sinkoman. I might be saying that wrong. He's Finnish. Also from the University of Helsinki. We could take our children out to nature five times a week to have an impact on microbes. Are you getting out and getting dirty with your animals on a regular basis? There was also a new book that came out in August or relatively around August, 2020, um, from Dr. Jack Gilbert. It's called dirt is good. The advantage of germs for your child's developing immune system. Uh, Dr. Jack Gilbert, who's actually the co-author, please excuse me, says that exposing children to the everyday microbes found outside in nature, including dirt can help a child develop a strong, healthy immune system. I just have to throw one little like 
side tangent in here. Um, if you recall back to a video I did probably a couple months ago now on glyphosate, one of the reasons there are many <laughs> as to why glyphosate, if you're not familiar with the word glyphosate, it's the um, active ingredient in Roundup and now so many other uh, Roundup like products. It, it is essentially an antibiotic and we are dousing fields of crops with this chemical that is dangerous in so many ways, but it is also uh, killing all of the bacteria in the soil in these crops because it is essentially an antibiotic. So uh, I just thought I'd throw that little tangent in there to leave a little little note in your brain and start like piecing in, in last week's episode, I was talking about all of the information we get are like pieces of a puzzle and we have to put it together. And so that's just another little puzzle piece for you to have like a little nugget of information for you to have. But I also found this really great article, which is also about this Finnish study uh, in Finland. That, that's what I meant. Finnish as in Finland from the scientist, which is, it looks like an online uh, magazine news place. And they, they were, they did a different study um, in, in a laboratory and outside of the laboratory. So they were using mice as well as children and exposing them to dirt basically. And I wanted to bring this up because by using mice, we're bringing animals into it. So now, okay, we're looking at now <laughs> our dogs and cats are mammals. Of course, they are different species than we are, but we're mammals. They're mammals. All of this that we're talking about today, dirt is good. Getting dirty um, is very valuable for us, for our dogs, for our cats, for our pets, for mammals in general. The, the Finnish team's mice, I want to specifically talk about the mice here were in prolonged physical contact with microbe filled soil. Of course, they had a control group as well. Other work suggesting that even trace amounts of airborne, airborne soil along the lines of what a person might experience by spending time in nature could have effects on the, the mouse's health, on the, the health of the mice in the study or in, in the world, right? In work published, restoration ecologist Martin Breed, he's in Australia, and his colleagues placed small amounts of soil with varying levels of biodiversity in a tray outside a mouse cage and ran a fan over it for two hours a day to create a very light wafting <laughs> towards the animals. The soil amounted, the, the load of the soil amounted to a 100 to 1000 times lower dose than used in other studies. So this is a very, very small dose. Nevertheless, seven weeks of this short exposure to soil with high microbial diversity, the animals showed changes in their microbiomes and scored lower on standard stress tests. By the end of the experiment, the feces of the mice in the high biodiversity enclosures were more likely the high diversity soils than they were at the start. So there was a, a direct colonization into the gut from the soil. And Breed, who was one of the, the researchers, says, I was floored by the fact that we could pick up mouse poo differences based on such tiny levels of exposure. The field is using re re results, these results such as these, to begin making the case that exposure to a diverse bacteria in the environment is one mechanism underlying the wide ranging health benefits of, of spending time in nature. I think there is more and more evidence to back up the statement that there is a direct contribution of the soil to human health. It didn't take me long to find all of this information. Now, this is something quite honestly, I knew, I mean, think about how healthy children are, we know, we know for a fact, and it has been studied that children living in rural areas that are out in the country that live in areas of countries where, um, you know, they're still farming or they grow up on farms or living out on the land all the time. They have significantly less allergies. They have significantly less autoimmune disease. They are much healthier in general. They don't get sick near as often. We know that spending time in nature is healthy for us. So that was just kind of the point I wanted to get across today in this get dirty episode. Um, it's so important. I, I, 
I see people and this happens a lot. So this happens, this happens a lot with tiny, tiny dogs. And of course our cats are, are affected by it because our indoor cats, they, they don't get time outside. But then I, I, I was getting ready to say, I, I see this happen, especially with tiny, tiny dogs. People want to carry them everywhere. They never, their feet never touch the ground or if they do, it's only on concrete to keep them clean. Right. This is so not good <laughs> for our animals. Um, it is probably the worst part of life for our indoor cats. We need to safely provide outdoor exposure for our animals. And if we can't safely provide outdoor exposure, then we need to figure out ways to bring the indoors in to them. Let our dogs get out there, run through the mud, play, get dirty, do all the things that dogs do. And for a cat, if you can safely take them out in your backyard, if you can safely take them on walks, do it. If you can't, maybe consider bringing like a little kiddie pool of healthy soil, fill it with healthy soil and bring it into an area of your home that is easy to clean because your cat is going to get in there and have a ball. I promise. So with that, I hope those are some good tips for you to understand first, firstly, how important it is that we do not just you, but your pets get to connect with nature. It is good for our stress levels. As I mentioned in one of the studies, it is good for our immune systems. It is good for our overall mental state. It just, it's how we're supposed to live and it's how our animals are supposed to live. So we need to as their guardians, we need to be able to provide this to them in the safest ways possible. So with that, I'm going to end today's solo episode. We're going to have some more uh, interviews coming up very soon. I'm very excited for everything we have coming. So make sure if you're not already following the podcast, you do so. And make sure you are uh, subscribed to Patreon as well. You can go to the petparentingreset.com right there at the top of the page. There's a link to Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and have like direct contact with me so we can talk and I can help answer questions and you get exclusive content behind the scenes content. There's so much stuff over on Patreon. I'm telling you it's, it's a steal at a dollar a month, but you can join for as little as that. So uh, with that, I'm going to end today's episode. I hope you and your pets have a wonderful rest of your day. Give them some extra love from me until next week. Bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.